Open to orthogonal functions. So just a quick definition. Uh, integrable functions. Uh, F and G are said to be orthogonal. on the interval AB. If the integral of their product is zero all over that interval. So if the integral from A to B of f of x times g of x uh, dx is equal to zero. So we are going to show that uh, the function of one cosine of n pi over lx and sine of n pi over lx, where n ranges through all of the positive integers, are orthogonal functions on negative l to l. Um, just a quick note, um, these are precisely the eigenfunctions for that last case of um, boundary value problems. So note these are the eigenfunctions So these are the eigenfunctions uh, for the boundary value problem y double prime plus lambda y equals zero with y of negative l equaling y of l and uh, y prime of l, sorry, y prime of negative l equaling y prime of l. So uh, to show that these are orthogonal functions, let's first go ahead and take our, uh, if uh, we pick f of x to be just the constant function one, which was one of our options, and g of x to be some cosine of n pi over l times x. Uh, then we get um, the, the integral from negative L to L of f of x times g of x dx is the integral from negative L to L of cosine of n pi over L x dx which is uh, L over n pi times sine of n pi over Lx uh, evaluated from negative L to L. So we are looking at L over n pi times sine of n pi minus L over n pi times sine of uh, negative n pi. And this is zero. So in the case where we have f of x equaling one and g of x being a, one of the cosine functions, we do have the f and g are orthogonal. Next up, if we have f of x equaling one, and g of x being one of our sine functions. Then we have that the integral from negative L to L of f of x times g of x dx is equal to the integral from negative L to L of sine of n pi over x dx. Um, sine is an 
a sign of m pi over, sorry, m pi over L, not n pi over X. Sorry, they should have been m pi over L times X, n pi over L times X, and then dx. All right, um, sine of m pi over L times X is a uh, odd function. And so if we take an integral that's some, a definite integral symmetric about the uh, x equals zero, we just get that this integral is equal to zero by default. Uh, next up, uh, we can do if uh, f of x is one of our cosine functions. So cosine n pi over l x and g of x is one of our sine functions. Then we have uh, the, the integral from negative l to l of f of x times g of x dx is the integral from negative l to l of cosine of n pi over Lx times sine of n pi over Lx dx. Um, this cosine times sine, this is an even function times an odd function. And when you multiply an even function by an odd function, you get out an odd function. And so once again, we get that our definite integral must be equal to zero. Um, again, if you think of even and odd as the odd functions, you have, if you mirror about the x-axis, you also flip the y. So think of odd as like having a multiple of negative one even does not. And so if we do a negative times a positive, we get negative again. So it's still an odd function. Uh, next up, we do the case that if f of x is cosine of n pi over Lx, and g of x is cosine of m pi over Lx, so we have two different cosine functions, um, where here n does not equal m. Orthogonal functions, we don't have to worry about the function with itself, just a function with any other possible combination. So then we have that the definite integral from negative l to l of f of x times gx, d of x times uh, dx is equal to uh, the definite integral from negative L to L of cosine of n pi over L uh, x times cosine of m pi over L x dx. But if we do a cosine times a cosine, uh, we can go ahead and just use our trig identities here. Uh, this winds up being, uh, we have the integral from negative L to L of one half times uh, cosine of n pi uh, minus m pi over Lx. Uh, cosine of A times cosine B, we do one half of cosine A minus B plus cosine a plus b. So doing cosine of a minus b, we would be looking at n minus m times pi divided by l, all times x. And then we will add on cosine of uh, n plus a plus b, we will do n plus m times pi over l x and then dx. So we are looking at one half times 
cosine of n minus m pi over l times x. Uh, integrating would become l over n minus m pi. Uh, times sine of n minus m pi over l x. And then we will have plus l over n plus m pi times sine of n plus m pi over l x. And then this is evaluated from negative l to l. So we are looking at one half. Actually, we don't even need to go too far. Sorry, we can just skip this part. If we look back at what we did previously, we already evaluated uh, the integral from negative L of cosine of an integer times pi over Lx and found that to be zero. So we can go ahead and use that trick. So note from before, uh, we saw that the integral from negative L to L of cosine of some integer times pi over Lx dx was equal to zero for k any integer. Uh, not equal to zero. We are only dealing with n and m positive, and we are dealing with a case where n does not equal m. And so we wind up getting, since uh, n and m are both positive, and n is not equal to m, uh, we get that n minus m and n plus m are non-zero. And so we get then that we just have that our integral is zero. Uh, last case we have is if we have f of x uh, is um, sine of n pi over Lx and g of x is sine of m pi over Lx. Again, with n not equaling m. Then we have the integral from negative l to l of f of x times g of x dx is equal to the integral from negative l to l of sine of n pi over l x times sine of m pi over l x dx. Again, using some trig identities, if we have sine A times sine B, that is one half sine of A, sorry, cosine of A minus B minus cosine of A plus B. So we are looking at the integral from negative L to L of one half times cosine of N minus M uh, pi over LX minus cosine of n plus m pi over lx dx. And once again, by this, oh, I apologize. I need to update my screen. Uh, once again, by the same logic as before, this is equal to zero. And so we've checked every possible combination of distinct functions. So we have that one, and uh, cosine of n pi over L times X and sine of n pi over L times X uh, for uh, n greater than zero, an integer. Uh, all of these are orthogonal uh, functions. 
where this is an, an orthogonal set of functions. Uh, the fact that these, this is an orthogonal set of functions will allow us to essentially create series using these functions instead of using powers of x. Um, and so that will be our next session. Section We will start at looking series built out of this particular set of functions uh, instead of building power series. Um, and these series will be useful for solving partial differential equations.